anytime you're going to be scraping, the first thing you always do is hinge the part. Um, this is true from the very first time you're going to start into through every single time that you're checking or going to mark the part. So I'll show you why here. This first one uh, hinges, oh I got a little rust already starting. This first one hinges, hang on a second here, let's try this again, let's see where it hinges. Okay, this one's hinging in the center. Because of that, you have no way to get an accurate mark because this thing can tilt one way or the other. So the first thing you have you're going to have to do is scrape it so that you get a little bit of a uh, your hinge point comes out to at least two spots. Right now, spinning in the center like that that's not going to work. So no sense in even marking that one. It's not going to tell you anything. Okay, here's the other one. Now you can see it's hinging here. It's hinging over here. That's almost perfect. So this one is hinging really well. I could go ahead, if I wanted to, and blew it up and uh, mark it and start scraping. But what I'm going to do is just go through and do a cross pattern both directions on this one. And then this one here, which actually looks nicer, um, I'm going to do a, a light pattern here and deeper in the center and light at the ends. Kind of like step scraping. Um, in fact, I can feel it's a little higher there. To get it to where it hinges. Um, I'm not going to even bother blowing this one. One other thing I did that I, I didn't show is I went ahead and put these in my blast cabinet and did a... Uh, 75 mesh broken glass uh, blast on it and it came out uh, surprisingly well it didn't there's very little uh, voids or virtually no voids in the casting but I wanted to do that to get it really clean before it starts scraping because every time you place it on here you have the risk of dropping stuff on and also every time you scrape you got to be really really sure that it's clean when you Every time you're going to mark, I should say, uh, rather than scrape. And I'll take these outside and I'll blow them off with air and wipe them down each time because you don't want to be blowing these little particles around the shop when you're scraping. Anyway, that's, that's horrible right now as far as high point. Here, one thing that can be done to help you get your scrapes in the proper lines is if you go ahead and draw some just draw some 45s okay when you've done enough scraping you don't need to put these lines on you kind of know which direction to go I'm using an older biax scraper electric power scraper because it's older it doesn't have variable speed so what i've done is i've hooked it up to a variable speed rheostat so that'll get me uh the the speed that i need um, full blown or full on it goes a little too fast um, for now I've got about half speed also on these scrapers you can adjust the length of stroke by adjusting a, a there's like a cam screw in there I've got it adjusted for the, for the stroke I want the angle of the blade is important this one here is a 40 that means a, a 40 millimeter radius and that's good for starting with and then also in the center of this triangle that's one inch and that'll tell you how many uh, 
spot you have per inch. So, let's just start now. That's a, a good stroke for later in the process as far as length, but it's it's a little too little to start off with. Plus these the depth of these are probably four four or five thousandths, which is what I want to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the stroke length. All right, I got the stroke think a lot longer. Let's see how it goes now. I'm using some uh, canoed blue spotting. I'm going to just put some. I'm using an ink roller. And what I found in the past is this thing picks up all kinds of dust, static, because it's rubber. So always check that, make sure that's clean. And now we want to try and spread this ink around. It's really important that you get the ink smooth on here, consistent layer, or uh, it'll affect your spotting, your marking. That looks pretty good. Okay, I've cleaned off my straight edges really good, wiped them down. I'm going to hinge them before I do anything else, just to see where I'm at. See, this one's still hinging in the middle. So it doesn't do me any good to do any further marking on that one. This one. Okay. It's hinging towards the edges now. So what I'm going to do to make it easier to see I'm going to put some yellow canode on it. This makes the blue show up a little more. You don't have to do it. I didn't start doing this until I took uh, Richard King's class. Okay, now. You don't want to push down on it. Just move in circles. And then pick it up. Now we could see high spot here, here, and the corners there, over here. So we'll go scrape this again and see how it goes and eventually we'll start seeing a decent pattern. Okay, this is the first one that was hinging pretty good at the start. See where it's just, it's been scraped three times now. Hinging in here, that's good. Hinging in here, that's good. I put some yellow on it just to help things out. All right, you got a nice pattern there. That looks pretty good. Okay, this is the one that was high in the center. It's hinging right here right now. And then there. So that's still going to be high in the center. I still got to take more out in the center. I'm not going to touch the ends yet. One of the reasons for putting yellow down before you blew it is not only does the blue show up more, but when you come over here to start scraping, 
you can see where you've scraped. So if you go one direction and take all the blue off, you can come back the other way and see where you've scraped and go back and give it the other direction. If it wasn't blued, it's really hard to tell where the blue was. Also, I've shortened the stroke on the scraper now since my uh, spots are getting smaller. So I'm just doing circles and dive bombing here. Get rid of the blue spot. I'm going to spray it with a little WD-40. Actually, I'm going to spray it with a little 409. That'll clean off the the old uh, yellow, and now I'm going to lightly stone it to knock any burrs off. I'll watch these edges; they can get really sharp. Still see some of the machining marks in there. Okay, this is probably my last pass, and all I'm going to do is try and cut each of these high spots in half. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but I've done both of them. And this one's between 30 and 35 points per inch. And the other one is about the same, maybe 33 to 40 uh, spots per inch. So the bottoms are done. Next thing to do, I'm going to do the bevel. Oh, it took about um, two and a half hours each to do the bottom. And I'm um, pretty sure I, that would have been 45 minutes to an hour if I had a grinder and was able to grind them flat. I had to take off, one of them I had to take off almost three thousandths. Somehow the center was high. The other wasn't, wasn't too bad, but um, still it... Uh, takes a lot more than than if you have a grinder if you just rough machine it. I took uh, one quick pass on the scraper came over here and tried to kind of tricky to hinge so I, just mar I uh, went ahead and marked it and I'm getting uh, a nice pattern almost at the hinge points I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll just continue and uh... now I'm holding it in the same V blocks that I machined it in, and the V blocks are held in the vise. So I'm just going to go through here and um, I'll take off this spot, I'll take off this spot, and then I'll go the whole thing back and forth. <laughs> Look 
go mark it up to see what areas I need to take extra off and then I'll just do a pass the entire way like I did. Okay, I've taken four passes each way without marking it just to get down through those machining marks. And I just marked it and I came up with this pattern, which I'm really happy with. If, if it came up this way without even trying to knock down the high spots, that's pretty good. So now I just go through and um, cut each high spot in half. I'll take what's called circles. I'll go in this area up through here, down through there um, to get it leveled out. Alright, the dovetail's done. Um, I've got about 40 inches, 40 marks, or 40 spots per inch. Um, they're kind of blended together because I put the, uh, the die, the marking die, a little thick. If it was thinner, these would all break up, but I like that pattern. Um, that's really good. Not much left on that one. So, I'll go ahead and just scrape this back thing. Okay, I've pretty much given up on this edge here. It's so short that you're just chasing it back and forth. Um, but it's it's relatively straight if you wanted to put it up against something. I don't know why. So the main two surfaces are are this one and the dovetail. So this one's finished. This dovetail only took, uh, oh, let's see. About an hour to do the whole dovetail, a lot faster than this whole bottom. It machined much better. I, I had very little to do to start uh, where I could start breaking up the spots. So, all done. I'm going to paint it and then uh, I'll, maybe I'll post a picture when it's all painted. I finished the project, painted them up. I like this machine blue and they give a little accent to the letters. This is a good project to learn to scrape on. It's small enough. You don't need a very big surface plate to do your spotting. And it all, you know, it has a, a flat and a 45 so you can practice two different uh, surfaces, two different types of surface.